moving on to a story that we've been following since the very beginning. A fourth person has been arrested in the drive-by shooting death of a six-year-old Orangeburg County boy. Seth Phillips was arrested in New York Wednesday night. Sheriff Leroy Ravenel says he called Winston Hunter's family as soon as he got word of the arrest. Winston passed away May 13th in a shooting on McLean Street in North. Ravenel says the four men involved were in the area for either a robbery or a drug deal and shot into Winston's home. Investigators say the men have no ties to Winston or his family. Developing this morning, hundreds of Russian soldiers are refusing to fight in Ukraine. That's what the Wall Street Journal is reporting, citing a Russian lawyer who's representing the soldiers. They're suing for being dismissed for desertion. They can sue because Russia has not officially declared war. The Guardian reporting something similar, that at least 115 Russian National Guardsmen say they were fired for not fighting. As a result of poor morale, the UK says Russia has lost about one-third of its invading force, even so Russia is making gains in eastern Ukraine. Still have in your coronavirus headlines this morning, the summer travel season is expected to be the busiest since the pandemic, and that has health experts pretty worried as coronavirus hospitalizations are going up again and vaccination rates are tapering off. As of last Saturday, DHEC statistics showing approximately 8,600 cases statewide, 228 hospitalizations, and two recent deaths. Even more alarming to health specialists, the almost 10% dip in vaccination rates in the last week compared to the week before. Fewer than 64% of eligible adults and 21% of children here in the state of South Carolina, ages 5 to 11, have had just one dose. In other headlines this morning, we've talked about it before, but there still seems to be a sticky situation. You guessed it, I'm talking about your water. If you're a Columbia water customer, you've probably been dealing with a strange taste and an odd smell with the water coming out of your faucet. But if this has you worried, public work officials say there's nothing to be afraid of. They say it's an issue with algae blooms in local rivers. It's a phenomenon that has happened before, but it's something new in the Broad River area. Columbia water officials say the water isn't a health hazard and they conduct tests every single day to make sure that it stays that way. <laughs> Uvalde City and School District Police Forces have reportedly stopped cooperating with the state investigation into the deadly school shooting. Multiple law enforcement sources telling ABC News they are no longer working with officials in the state probe. The shift taking place after a news conference Friday when the director of the Texas Department of Public Safety said the delayed police entry into the school was contrary to protocol. <laughs> Carolina Watch, the Georgetown County Coroner says what killed missing teen Brittany Drexel is, quote, undetermined. Arrest warrants say she was strangled to death, but that could not be confirmed because of the conditions of the remains. Drexel vanished from Myrtle Beach during spring break back in 2009. Raymond Moody is charged with murder, rape and kidnapping in the case. The coroner says Drexel's remains have been sent to the Charleston County Coroner's Office for further examination. Well, several men are accused of contacting children for sexual activity. Listen to this. According to the Lexington County Sheriff's Department, the men that you see on your screen are accused of trying to meet with children after messaging them online. However, things weren't how they appear. Those children yeah, they were actually deputies pretending to be underage teens. After one of the men asked to meet with a child, detectives would show up and arrest them. Texas lawmakers are calling for Robb Elementary to be torn down. Teachers and families are concerned for their children returning to the site of the massacre in the fall, where 19 students and two teachers passed away. People visiting the grounds memorial outside the school say it's too painful to come back and they want it removed as quickly as possible. One Texas congressman says he's already working on funding the project. 
Another Midland student facing charges after deputies say he brought a gun to school. It all took place at Richland Northeast High School. Deputies say a school resource officer was tipped off through social media that a student brought a gun. Officials say the resource officer found the gun after searching the 15 year old's backpack. Nobody was hurt or threatened and the teen is facing several charges this morning. Right now, police are investigating after six teenagers were hurt in a shooting in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It happened over the weekend. Authorities say the six victims include five 15 year olds and one 13 year old. Two of them are in bad shape. Police believe the shooting started after two groups met in the area and began moving towards each other in what appeared to be the start of a fight. Thank you. Time now 734 and local law enforcement, medical professionals and community leaders exhausted by a recent string of deadly gun violence involving young people here in the Midlands. According to the Richland County Sheriff's Department, gun violence has risen at an alarming rate since 2019, peaking in 2021. A citywide community ambassador program being launched to fight back against this trend and save young lives. Community leaders saying young people need better options to steer clear of senseless crimes and a family's request for an independent investigation of the deadly shooting of Irvin Moore Charlie is still unfulfilled. Deputies shot the 34 year old last weekend after his family called 911 asking for help. SLED, which is known for looking into officer involved shooting, says they have not been asked to investigate. The Richland County Sheriff's Department said in a statement Wednesday that they're the largest law enforcement agency in the state and have the capability to investigate. But SLED says, quote, this is not about capability. It is about conducting independent investigations. Deputies say all evidence and the investigation will be turned over to the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office when complete. Joe, thank you in your Carolina watch. A good deed that just keeps growing. A North Carolina businessman has donated almost half a million frequent flyer miles to families fleeing Ukraine. And now others are joining in. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Your time right now, just about 530 on your Friday, March 25th. I'm Olivia DeVenti. So today is a very, very special day, and you guys have to see them. Our Freddie Clairvaux and Dara Khalid live out in the field <laughs> talking about something very, very special. Guys, good morning. Um, first things first, you both look fantastic. Well, thank you, Liv. We appreciate that, Liv. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, what? So, thank you. Happening today, a groundbreaking ceremony for Claflin University's new student center. It'll all take place at 1230 in Orangeburg. The new student center centralizes student services in one location, including a bookstore, esports, gaming lounge, and much more. In other headlines this morning, a family's request for an independent investigation of the deadly shooting of Irvin Moore Charlie is still unfulfilled. Now, deputies shooting the 34 year old last weekend after his family called 911 asking them for help with the man. Our Brittany Breeding looking at why SLED isn't involved and why that agency's chief says maybe they should be. All right, well, you heard it from Kat herself. It's a good idea to maybe go to Camden a day or two before the event. A good time to, of course, boost that local economy even more. Shopping, eating, staying at the hotels, all the good stuff. Much more Good Day Columbia, as Brendan just said, coming up. And your recall alert, before you make that peanut butter toast for breakfast this morning, listen up. The FDA is investigating a multi-state salmonella outbreak they believe is linked to Jif peanut butter products. 14 people, including one here in the state of South Carolina, have reported getting sick. The salmonella cases have been tracked back to a plant in Kentucky operated by the J.M. Smucker Company. Now, because peanut butter can have a long shelf life, you are urged to check your pantries, even if it's been a while since you bought some peanut butter. The recalled products range in many sizes in both creamy and crunchy. So definitely make sure you check your pantries.
New this morning, North Carolina's Madison Cawthorn has lost his bid to stay in Congress. The controversial lawmaker is out of the running after last night's primary. Former President Donald Trump encouraged voters to support him despite his mistakes and legal troubles. Chuck Edwards won the GOP ticket, one of several candidates trying to oust Cawthorn. He says he called to concede. In your trending headlines on this Tuesday, March 22nd, three more teens charged with the murder of a 14 year old. School officials remembering the lives of two bus drivers who passed away within a week of one another. In other headlines this morning, the Gamecocks finalizing a five year deal with the new men's basketball head coach. And finally, a look at your forecast. A warmer Tuesday for us with possible storms tomorrow. You can find more on these stories by heading over to our website, watch.com, or by downloading our app. Just search Watch Fox News in your app store. Back here at home, Richland County releasing a statement following the death of an inmate at the Alvin S. Glenn Detention Center. And other headlines, school officials giving an inside look into Irmo Heights Nest Academy. And taking a look at your Midlands forecast, warm weather continuing to hang around right here as the week moves on. You can find more on those stories by heading over to our website, watch.com, or by downloading our app. Just search Watch Fox News in your app store. Time now, 540 in your national watch. A new weather satellite is now in orbit after launching from Cape Canaveral, Florida. It will help improve wildfire and flood forecasting for the western U.S. The GOES-18 replaces a similar satellite launched four years ago that had some technical issues. The first images should come next year after months of testing. It's the third in a $11.7 billion series of four weather satellites. The fourth will launch in 2024. Now these satellites also monitor solar flares and space weather. Now that is pretty cool. A juror in the Ghislaine Maxwell sex trafficking trial says he will invoke his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent in an upcoming hearing. That juror is accused of lying on a questionnaire ahead of being picked for the jury by saying he was never the victim of sexual abuse. In a media interview after the trial, the juror disclosed he had been sexually abused. The discrepancy has the potential to overturn Maxwell's guilty verdict. She faces up to 65 years in prison for facilitating Jeffrey Epstein's abuse of young girls. A former Lexington County police chief is facing criminal sexual conduct charges. 65-year-old William Parker once served as police chief of Pine Ridge. Specifics of the criminal sexual conduct and attempted criminal sexual conduct charges were not released. However, Lexington County deputies arrested him on Friday. Parker is now out on bond. This morning, a Midlands family is demanding answers from SLED after an assault at the State Department of Juvenile Justice put a 16 year old in the hospital with severe injuries. Now we do have to warn you, some of the images might be disturbing. The National Racial Justice Network backing the family in their right for justice. The family says the incident happened Thursday at the DJJ facility along Broad River Road. They say their 16 year old son, Divine Johnson, is not able to open his eyes and use his mouth after the attack. We are going to get to the bottom of this. This is one beating too much. We want change in this facility. We want these young people to be able to come out, go back to school, or get a job. The family and organizers with the Racial Justice Network want to know more about the attackers and think concealed weapons were used. SLED also said no other details are available right now, but they are continuing to investigate. Let's take a look at your health watch. The number of confirmed or probable cases of monkeypox has risen to 31 in the U.S. According to the CDC, those cases are in 12 states with the closest being in Georgia and Washington, D.C. Health officials worry infected people could give it to others in the United States. So to battle that, testing and vaccination is ramping up. The two-dose vaccine being offered is the same as the one used to prevent smallpox.